When last we left our intrepid adventurers, they had gated to a grotto under a lake and found a woman who claims to be the handmaiden of Absalom, the death master. They're resting. Australia lays across from Scala. In a whisper, she says that she knows Alima's secret. There's a sound they both look up and they see Alima towering over them. Australia defiantly stands up and says in a voice loud enough for the others to hear that Alima is actually a clone of her mistress Estella Argentium. She says that her mistress mentioned that to her years ago, that she had once made a clone, but it had escaped and had never been heard about again. Scala agrees that there is a resemblance to the woman she met the other day. Alima says that actually the clone never went anywhere. It was the original who was exiled to be out in the world, her. Scala mentions that there's a way to tell if Alima is the real Estelle. She carves the rune of truth EZL on a coin and then offers it to Alima. She says that if she is the clone, the rune will destroy her. If she is the real Estelle Argentium, no harm will come to her. Alima stomps away, not touching the coin. The party gathers together and discuss their next move. Finn says that perhaps that display was not the best thing to do. They do need to be in Alima's good graces if they're to escape from here. He offers to go and talk to her and see if he can win her over. The rest of the party wish him luck as they watch from a distance to make sure he's okay. They can hear the two talking, but not what's being said. They hear Finn singing a song about the Death Master and the beauty of his handmaiden. They seem to talk for a long time. Eventually, the singing stops and Alima and Finn go to her sleeping silks. The party turns away and everyone goes back to sleep. The party has strange dreams. Australia has a dream that she is the Jacanus of Deserata. In the dream, she has given up the title of sorcerer and married Emro Jun. It's several years in the future, and only their castle in Deserata remains fighting against the dark force. She is forced to flee as the darklings storm the castle. Finn dreams that he's invited to a large party to perform. When he arrives, it turns out that the party wants to cut the flesh off of him while he sings. Seraph has a dream that he is betting an unknown woman and standing at his side is a young Second Kingdom woman who looks on. Scala dreams of being trapped in a cave there are voices that taunt her and call her vile and untrue things. She catches a glimpse of one of them. It's a large black spider-like thing with a human face. As she runs away from the things, she notices that she has become a creature like they are. Marcus dreams that he's in bed with his wife, who passed away six months ago. But she's very much alive. She chides him for tossing and turning all night and keeping her awake. He says that he's sorry and that his nightmares have been bothering him. She takes him in her arms and soothes his head and tells him to go back to sleep. The next morning, the party wakes up and make plans to swim to the surface. Finn says that they must have slept the entire day away since it's dark on the surface again. 
The others are concerned as well. They ask Alima how long they slept. She says that they slept a normal night. However, the sun never touches the city of Deserata anymore. It's eternally night there, because Distaria has the power to make it so.